just a friendly reminder. Uh, just a friendly reminder that on Monday you have a vocab quiz. One, Tuesday, Tuesday. Damn it, I already messed it up. Damn it. This is what happens when I have a three day weekend. Tuesday, we have a vocab quiz one through ten. On Wednesday, you have eleven through twenty. On Thursday, you have a test, focus, spice, map, and primary do. I was going to make your map and primary do on Tuesday, but I think we can all agree there's no way you're going to remember to do your map and primary over the weekend. Can we agree? <laughs> so, uh, it's not supposed to be a gotcha, so hence why I push it back to Thursday so I can remind you on Tuesday. I can remind you on Wednesday. So, hopefully, we can get them all in on Thursday. So, we're clear. Also, a nice little friendly reminder that <coughs> next week, have to survive because we have a we got. Yeah, I was gonna say, I can't have wait to. to see you the day before that. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to Friday. New Orleans on Saturday morning. Ooh. New Orleans? Yeah, I'm so excited. Wait, 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 we're going to any jazz. No, I'm going with my mother in law, so yeah. let's keep it in context. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we're going, uh, oh, there's so many, like James Beard award winning restaurants, so the chef, I don't know. <laughs> The chef that I work for, he made reservations for me at a bunch of like these super incredible restaurants. And so last time we went, the chef gave us like a specially cured menu for it, curated menu for us, and it was so good. So all we do when we're in New Orleans is we wake up, we go eat, we go back and take a nap. <laughs> then we go up to eat for dinner. Wait, you don't go see any like jazz? That's like I mean, we might after dinner to like work off okay. what we just okay. ate. And then we come home on two Monday, and then we don't eat anything Tuesday, Wednesday, <laughs> and then Thursday. It's <laughs> we all day. What? Wait, what are we going to do on that Friday app? Like, Map. We should have a party. No. Yeah. Yes. No. <laughs> all right, here we go. So today we're doing a lecture. Uh, I'm warning you, there's like 10,000 names. What are we going to do? Do you have to remember that? <laughs> no. <laughs> really important? Not at all. Alright, here we go. So, we are in period four. So at the top of your notes, you're going to write really, really big. Period four. The date range of period four is 1450 to 1750. Now, why would they make it 1750 and not later? What are they trying to purposely avoid? This is how I remember it, 1750. What are they trying to avoid? All Americans in this room should know it. What are they avoiding, Garrett? British. No. <laughs> we'll be talking about the British here in like 10 seconds. Shabani. The American Revolution. The American Revolution. So we're trying to avoid the American Revolution and the buildup for the American Revolution. So it cuts off at 1750, so we don't have any of that conflict. Does that make sense? Yes? Okay, so uh, just to help you kind of start seeing the lines of in between our periods, that's why. So 1750 is a cutoff. Here we go. So Age of Exploration would be my title because that's what we're doing today. All right, so just listen. Just listen for a moment. So the Portuguese are going to be your most powerful nation first. Okay, they're the ones who are going to rise. They are a fishing nation because... They have a tiny country, and pretty much the largest side of their country is along the coastline. On the other side, it's super mountainous, and you can't even farm on it. Um, except they can grow grapes. They make delicious port wine. Ooh, really good wine. It's a dessert wine. Very fancy. Anyway, um, they are going to discover uh, the Azores. Now, just listen. I'm going to have you write it down in a later time when it makes more sense. The Azores are the only place in Eurasia that grows sugarcane. Sugarcane is going to have a very high demand, but if it only grows on one island chain, can you have a lot of it? No. Can you make that much money off of it? No. no. Yes. Not really. Kind of. Not really. Are, are you done? Yeah. Cool. So, because of that, uh, they can't do large scale marketing and stuff like that, but what are they going to be looking for all around the world? A place where it can grow, correct? Okay, so they know what conditions they need, so they're going to be looking for it. Guess what the Portuguese are going to be the largest exporter of? Sugar. Sugar. And where does the largest amount of sugar in the world grow from? Caribbean. No. Portugal. Where, does, where do people speak Portuguese? Oh, um, Brazil. Brazil is a perfect, has perfect temperature. You speak Portuguese. <laughs> Guys, the easiest thing about the age, of, uh, the age of exploration is think about what current language they speak. That's the country that conquered them. Yeah, 
they speak Spanish, who conquered them? Spain. If they speak French Creole, who conquered them? French. French. And if they speak English, the English. I know. See how this goes. All right. So, just listen. We obviously still have trade going. The demand for trade is going higher. People are trying to avoid the Silk Road. Why are people all of a sudden avoiding the actual route of the Silk Road, Logan? Yeah, the bubonic plague would make you not want to travel Silk Road, too. Can we agree? So they're looking for a way to continue trading, but not going across the Silk Road. So maritime trade is going to start opening up. Now, there's a new item that you should just be aware of. I don't think any of you need to write it down. It's called pepper. Pepper. Yes, pepper is going to be one of the, the highest demand item coming out of India. Okay, imagine your life without pepper today. If you ask your mom not to use pepper in your food for, for like three days, you would notice because your parents put pepper in everything you eat. They boil water for anything, they put pepper in it. If they cook chicken, it has pepper on it. If it's marinated in something, it's in pepper. Everything we eat has pepper in it. Everything. Okay? So imagine the demand is going to increase significantly because of it. Okay. Just be aware. These countries are going all over the place for trade, and they happen to say, well, we can't just exploit them for goods. We'll give them God. <laughs> so they don't feel nearly as bad, so we have missionaries going around. Um, just be aware of it. We're going to come back to this point later. Uh, just be aware that they're sending traders <laughs> and missionaries, these poor people in these poor port towns. They're like, what the hell? Why can't you just buy our stuff? All right, here we go. This is where you're going to write down age of exploration. We've got technology. Okay, there's a lot you need to write down here because this is huge. You know how you people love citing Dows and Jukes for all of your evidence, mostly Maggie? <laughs> this is what you'll be using as tons and tons of evidence for period four. Does that make sense? Obviously, the age of exploration is a huge component of period four, so this is what you'll be using. You need to write down Chinese rudder. This is how they steer the big ships. Okay, so Chinese rudder is how they're going to steer the big ships. Okay. You need to know triangular lateen sails. Don't just write triangular sails. You need to know triangular lateen sails. So think about it. If you're on an open ocean and you are sailing, okay, so you don't have a motor, and the wind is going in the wrong direction, what happens? Do you keep your sails up or you put them down? Put you put them down. them down, okay, so the wind is just going to blow over you. So how fast do you move it? You're not. You may actually, you'll be drifting backwards because the wind is still going to push the ship. Now, if the wind is going in the wrong direction, okay, if it's going across your ship, what do you do? If you have your traditional sails, you also have to put your sails down. So only when the wind was perfect do you actually have the wind going. How often do you think that occurs? Not very often, but triangular sails, triangular lateen sails are triangular sails that they can adjust in a specific way that they can catch the wind in a certain direction and can still propel them in the correct direction. So that is going to allow ships to be moving at a much regular basis, which means trade is going to be faster. So that's a big deal. Navigational instruments, you're going to write astrolobe. The astrolobe uses the stars. Now, uh, uses the stars and allows oceanic exploration to occur. Why didn't they need the astrolobe to sail in the seas? Why, Peyton? You just sail in straight line. No. No. It's not going to be a straight line now. Why did they need it in all the seas? Arima? It's so small you're bound to Yeah, you, you have landmarks. You can follow the landmarks, correct? Like, for instance, could you tell me the streets to get to your house right now? Like, I'm going to go down. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. can? I can. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Like, I can't tell you. Like, I have no idea what that street is that we drive out on. No. No, no, this one out here. Like, Dale Nemo. by next to the stadium. Hines. 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 Or Hines. Hines. Is that Heinz? Yeah. yeah. No, the one in the front of the school is Heinz. The one in the back of the school is Delhi. No, I know, but one right by the stadium. That's like that cut that in one. between the baseball oh, field. Yeah, yeah uh, see, you have no idea what you're talking about either. The one that Wait, the one that like cuts. No, no, you like that. It's the residential. Yeah, I know. That's North One that, yeah, yeah. Sure. Like, and then I have no idea, like, some of the side routes that I take every single day. That's the thing. We use landmarks to decide things. That's why. In your sea basin travel, you didn't need it because you had the landmarks. Because all the ships are going around the coastline to keep the landmarks. When you're in an ocean, you got landmarks? No, it's an ocean. So you need to have the stars for the first time, and that's why it had to be developed. 
You also need to know the Volta de Mar is your knowledge of the wind directions. Volta de Mar is the knowledge of the wind directions. Previous to this, we only knew the wind directions in what basin? In the ocean basin. Now we're going to start figuring out the wind direction in all of the seas. Now the only people who use this information today, because we have steam engines and we have gas-powered engines and all that stuff, um, so we don't care about wind directions, are our weathermen and women. They're the only ones who use the Volta de Mar at this point, and that allows them to track the weather. What? So the actual The astrolobe allows the navigation of seas because there's no landmarks, right? You gotta know how where you're going. Alright. So this is the Volta de Mar, essentially. It's all your wind currents and tells you where you're going. I used to make you do this map, but um, I met you <laughs> and I said no. <laughs> yeah, Thank yeah. You. This would be horrific. You're welcome. Alright, here we go. Portugal. Portugal is the big header of this one. Now you need to know that Portugal, I put a little star next to it. They are the first nation to create an exploration empire. And it is directly caused by Prince Henry's Navigation School. You're going to write that down. Portugal is the first nation to have a navigational empire and it's based entirely on Prince Henry's Navigation School. Okay, now Prince Henry's Navigational School has every alum that you can possibly think of. Christopher Columbus, Vasco da Gama, Ferdinand Magellan, we got James Cook, we have Bartholomew Diaz. Every single person who matters is in Prince Henry's Navigational School. Now, something you do need to write down is that Prince Henry's Navigation School is going to bring together captains, shipbuilders, and people who develop technology together in order to facilitate trade. That's pretty awesome. It's like the first major world think tank. Prince Henry School of Navigation brings together captains, shipbuilders, and people who develop technology in order to allow the age of exploration to occur. So without it, it wouldn't have happened. You need to know that our boy Bartholomew <laughs> Diaz is the first person to round the Cape of Good Hope. Just write down. I don't care about this date. I don't care about this date. You don't have to write down this date. Just know that the following idea is the first person to round the Cape of Good Hope. Alright, over here. Look at me, 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 look at me. Alright. So, Portugal is located right here. It's a teeny tiny little country. Okay, so what is going to happen is Bartholomew Diaz is going to leave Portugal and he is going to start stopping in places in Africa and ports. He's going to pull in. What do you think he's going to do when he pulls into a port that looks pretty nice? Well, he's not going to stay there. He's, he's, like, he wants, he's got things to do. He's going to get out of his boat and put one in the ground and say, Mine! Claims it for Spain. Now, is he colonizing? No. no. He's just creating ports in the name of Portugal. So he's not conquering the territory, but he's claiming this port in Portuguese. So every ship that pulls into his Portuguese port has to pay a duty. So it's called a duty is a tax, but it's called duty every time they pull in, which we're going to get into big details here in a second. So every time he lands, he puts a flag down. And he calls it mine, mine, mine. So every single ship that follows has to pay Portugal a duty. Do you think this is going to be in Portugal a lot of money or a little money? A lot of money. Wait, is this going to make it for yeah. Portugal or for Spain? For Portugal. It's Portuguese. Portuguese, yeah. Because they would have, they would leave people behind. I mean, it's obviously not every single port there on the first two, but they would leave people behind to start the port. So, Bartholomew Diaz is going to leave Portugal and claim a bunch of ports. Now, Cape of Good Hope is right here, we call it today, in South Africa. Now, what is happening here that makes it very dangerous and why it's a big deal he's the first one to do it is because obviously we have Antarctica, which is pretty damn flat, correct? So all the wind from the bottom of the world blows straight over Antarctica and it blows straight up onto Africa. So the coastline of South Africa, since it's just been punished by waves for since the dawn of time, is super jagged, 
super rock, super, super rocky. Also, unpredictable wind gusts, because is there anything that's stopping it? No, it's just coming right off the Arctic, <coughs> tundra. So it is crazy, crazy windy with crazy, crazy sharp and unpredictable rock patterns in the bay. Super, super dangerous. It's called the Cape of Good Hope because up until Bartholomew Diaz, everyone who tried died. Even when Bartholomew Diaz came up with his specific route, which if you used his specific route, you had to pay a duty, by the way. Even after, people wreck all the time down there, up until we started having, of course, our navigation by our ships and stuff like that. People go diving off of the Cape of Good Hope, and they just have shipwreck on shipwreck on shipwreck on shipwreck on shipwreck that you can just see along the water, which is pretty cool. Also pretty tragic, but pretty cool. Um, and so he's the first one to go along on the other coast. Now, once he gets over here, Okay, he is going to turn around pretty damn quickly because all the men are like, oh my god, oh my god, we're never going to make it back. So he turns around pretty quickly and goes back. Then we have a guy named Vasco da Gama. Now Vasco da Gama is the most important name out of the two. You should know Bartholomew Diaz because he's the one who opens up the route. But it's Vasco da Gama who very shortly, within 10 years later, is going to be the first European to sail to India. He lands in the fourth city of Calcutta. I don't need to know, but just be aware. Now, if we said that the Dia, uh, Vasco da Gama's trip cost $1,000, just throwing out the numbers so we can talk about it, okay? That cost for the ship, the captain, all the sailors, all the food, all the supplies to get there, okay? When he shows up in India, remember, he's the first European to ever be there, okay? He pulls up into Calcutta and he just looks out onto the ports and there's spices, there's everything you can possibly imagine on this port. And they are just completely blown away by how much of these spices that they've been paying the hundreds of dollars for that are now just massive piles on a ship, right? So they fill the ship to the absolute gills, pack the ship as full as they can, and then they sail it all the way back. When they return after two years at sea, okay, going and coming back, they are received like heroes, and their one cargo of ship, that one ship, could have paid for 250 voyages. So, is it worthwhile to pack a ship and send it over there? Yeah. Yes. And every nation sees what's happening in Portugal. Oh, shit. We gotta do it. So guess what every nation, that moment the Vasco da Gama pulls in a port and everyone sees what it has on its boat, is what every ship in Europe is doing. They are trying to figure out a way to get to India because of how much money. Now, it is important for you to understand that Spain and Portugal hate each other. They still hate each other. If you call a Portuguese person Spanish, you are going to get your butt kicked. Okay? So they hate each other so much. So, who is now going to be making tons of money hand over fist off of navigational trade? The Portuguese. The Portuguese. So, do you think the Spanish are going to want to pay all those duties? Do you think the Spanish want to pay to use the route the Portuguese came up with? No. They want to say, screw you, Portugal. So, what the Spanish do to say, screw you, Portugal? This dude from Italy comes to Spain. He's like, I got a crazy idea. And they're like, cool. Does it screw over Portugal? And he's like, yes. And he's like, yes. Let's do it. Christopher Columbus goes to Spain and says, I believe that the world is not that big. He knows the world is not flat. He knows the world is not flat. They proved everyone in the world knows the world is not flat at this point. No one knows exactly how long it would take to sail from Europe to India. Remember, they don't know the Americans are there. They definitely don't know that. But they don't think the world is flat. So he's like, I think the world is only this long. I think if I sail west for a month and a half, I will land in the Indies. And no one has to pay the Portuguese for anything. And the Spanish are like, you're Italian. Who cares if you die? You know? And no, the Portuguese are going to get screwed over and they're not going to like this. Perfect. So the Spanish are going to pay for three ships. Who are they? The Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa. What the hell did you people do in elementary school? <laughs> like, literally nothing. <laughs> literally nothing. Now, just be aware. So, 
So Christopher Columbus gets on his Nina the Pinta and the Santa Maria, okay? And they sail westward, okay? So they sail westward and they land in the Bahamas. Now, the people in the Bahamas are what color at this point? Brown. They're brown. They're not black yet. Because then someone was like, well, they're black this minute. And I was like, where do black people come from historically? Africa, right? We got brown people in all places. We've got white people in some places. We've got Asian people in some places, yes? At this point, everyone in the Caribbean are brown, right? Because everyone in the Americas is brown at this point. Why do black people show up in the Bahamas today? Slave trade. Yes. We see it. So I was like, no, 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 no. Bohemians are black. <laughs> anyway, that's so important. Huh? <laughs> anyway. So, Christopher Columbus, he lands in the Bahamas, and he finds brown people. There's brown people, where else? In India, in the islands over there. So he's like, oh my god, Indians! <laughs> now, he knows he's not near continental India, okay? He thinks he's in these islands way over here. He thinks he's in, like, the what, East Indies and all that stuff. He thinks he's over there. So he goes back to Spain, he's like, we claimed a bunch of stuff for you, but if I try again, I think I can get it. And Spain's like, well, sure, if you're close, why not? So he goes over three times, and after the third time, the Spanish are like, you're clearly, like, not accomplished anything, and the Portuguese are just getting more wealthy, and they're like, we're done with you. So Christopher Columbus dies broke and alone in a little house. No one gives a shit about him. No one cares. He's no hero, okay? He dies in obscurity, okay? About 50 years later, a guy goes to the Spanish court, and he's like, hey, you know how you got all those claims over there? How about I go check it out for you? Well, this is under Queen Isabella and Ferdinand. And they're like, yeah, why don't you? And so he's like, sure, cool, let me do it. So he goes, and instead of sticking in the islands, he keeps sailing and lands in Mexico. Who am I describing? Now, he goes to Florida. Oh, um, Cortez. And Cortez. Very nice, Rima. It's Cortez. No one gives a shit about the Americas under Columbus. And no one cares. There's a flag in the mud. No one cares. Why is it being mentioned so much? Okay, the reason why we as Americans know Christopher Columbus' names as much as we do is because during the 1800s, there was a large exodus of Italians from Italy to the Americas. And similar to what we have here, you know how uh, America is framing all of these Hispanic people coming as, you know, demonic and trying to ruin our culture. The Italians were hated. Just like the Irish were hated before them. Yes, we've always had a fear of people. Uh, so when the Italians came here, everyone hated the Italians, and so they wanted to make themselves better and see that their major contribution is a guy named Christopher Columbus. So the reason why we have a national holiday is because of the Knights of Columbus. It was a bunch of Italians who wanted to make people see that Italians were important in, to the American story. <coughs> That's it. No one gives a shit about Columbus <coughs> until the 1800s. All right. So, it is important for you to know that he is going to claim a bunch of territory, but he dies broken alone. Okay? Just be aware that he is going to open up trade to the Americas, of course. Now, circumnavigation. You have a guy named Nunez de Balboa. He's the first one to see the Pacific in Panama. Why is it in Panama that he sees the Pacific? It makes logical sense. Why, okay? So that's the smallest point, or the closest point from your landing. Yeah, it's like 18 feet difference, too. I can't wait. I'm going to go to Panama one day in my life. I want to do the Panama Canal. What? What does he do? He, he sees the Pacific. He knows that there's another body of water on the other side. So because of that, we have a guy named Ferdinand Magellan who is more important that you need to put a star around. He is given credit for the first person to circumnavigate the world. Now. He shouldn't really get that title because he gets executed by a chieftain because he was flirting with his daughter on a beach in uh, French Polynesia, which is pretty awesome. I don't care who you are, that's pretty hilarious. Anyway, so Ferdinand Magellan sails from Portugal. He goes to the islands and sails around the tip of South America, around the Cape, uh, Cape Horn, comes up and then goes to French Polynesia over here. He dies in French Polynesia. He gets executed because he was getting a little too close cuddly with the chief's daughter, so he gets executed on the beach. Then all of his, uh, the rest of his ship, all of the rest of his sailors obviously run in sheer panic, correct? Uh, and they get back on their ship. And then 
So most of them land back over here. And these are known territories at this point, and that's why we call it the first circumnavigation, because it goes from unknown to known. Uh, it takes about seven or ten years for an, one sailor to make it all the way around and get back to Portugal. But Ferdinand Magellan gets credit for it. Isn't that kind of crappy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what? He gets credit for the first circum circumnavigation going around the world first, even though he died halfway through. What? Wait, so is there not a bunch of rocks at the, the south? Yeah, it's definitely super treacherous. Alright, so it's not as bad though as Cape Horn, and I don't know why. I think that uh, if we, oh, look, we could look at our little Volta du Mar. As you can see, this wind really blows up. Uh, Cape of Good Horn is really not that bad. All the winds have a predictable pattern. As you can see, it circles. That's why. Alright. So, you do need to be aware that James Cook is going to discover the Pacific, which is why we have the what islands? The Cook Islands, people. Good, good, good putting it together. All right, to the boards. We got uh, a lot of names to check here. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the navigational school that will change the world forever. Good. Come on. Come on. I got two. I got two. Good. What is it, Ben? Prince Henry's navigational school. There we go. On your whiteboard. Who? What country opened Prince Henry's navigational school? You looked at the board, man. Yeah, I got Oh, you really want to do a map today, huh? <laughs> Good. What is it? Aiden. Portugal. Portugal. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what is the name of the first gentleman to sail around the Cape of Good Hope? And he will start laying the foundation, which will become the uh, Portugal's port system. Good. Who is it, Natalie? Bartolomeu Dias. Bartolomeu Dias. On your whiteboard, please tell me, who is the first Portuguese sailor to reach India? And he will forever transform the Indian Ocean Basin forever and ever. What do we got? Alex? Vasco da Gama. Vasco da Gama. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what is the name of the gentleman who gets credit for circumnavigating the world, even though he died halfway through, man? Like, I think it's crappy. Good. If you just want to give me last name, I'm fine. You cannot give me first name. Good. Chloe. Ferdinand. Ferdinand. Magellan. On your whiteboard, please tell me who was the first person to see the Pacific. No. He's British. No. Logan, please educate your peers. Vasco Nunes. Why would you tell me the Pacific? Wait, how did you accept this? He doesn't. He explores Pacific. He doesn't discover the Pacific. He explores Pacific. The reason why we know so much about where all the islands are is from Cook, because he went around and just traveled everywhere. Okay? All right. On your whiteboard, please tell me what allows uh, ships to catch wind in any direction? Wait, in any direction? No, you can't say sails. No. No, you didn't. Garrett did. What is it? Is uh, what is it? Sadie? Uh, triangular black team sail. There you go. Need the triangular component of it. Oh, that's what would you say the answer? Triangular latin sails? Yeah, but like, what are they? They catch wind in any direction. Oh, they catch wind. On your whiteboard, please tell me what navigational tool relies on the stars and allows uh, oceanic trade. Shabani, on your whiteboard, please tell me what allows these massive ships to be steered. Good. What is it, Garrett? Chinese rudder. Chinese rudder. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is. I don't know. Oh, what is the first uh, country to really rise in power during the age of exploration? No. 
Come on. Good. Katie. Portugal. Portugal. What is the date range of period four? Good. What is it? Ben. 1450 to 1750. There we go. All right, here we go. We got things to do. Okay. Obvi uh, right trading post. That's your next heading, and it's going to get wild. We're going to have our first world war coming up. Are you enjoying all the names so far? Yeah. They're not as bad as I thought they would be. I thought they'd be like, oh, it's gods. And no, it's not as bad as I could not. Stop. Stop. This is so uh, Throwing down those gods names like nobody's business. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he pronounced it. Yeah. It's like we can say, we still poach things. Yeah, we still poach things. Cool, that's not coming out of my mouth. Here we go. All right, uh, trading posts. Obviously, the Portuguese are the first one to create a trading posts. Why? Who can raise their hand and tell me logically why that makes sense, Alex? Because they were the first to go around that. Yes, yeah, so they're the first ones to start setting up all these places. Okay, so they are going to create duties, trade duties, okay? You're gonna write down that term, you need to know it. A trade duty is a tax on any country not of the country who controls the port. It's a tax on a country who uses the port that is not of the origin country. So, if I pull into a Portuguese port and I'm from England, what do I have to pay? Duty. A duty. If I'm a Portuguese ship and I pull into a Portuguese port, what do I have to pay? Nothing. Okay? Who is, is this going to allow countries to make lots and lots of money? Yes. yes for just having a port in a good location. So, this is going to be very popular. How do you prove you're from, like, Portugal? You speaking Portuguese, and you also have a Portugal, Portuguese flag on it, and you also have official papers from Portugal. All right. So, the English and the Dutch, okay, the English and the Dutch are going to start growing their combinations as well. The English and the Dutch are going to start their little conflict. Now, if you look over here on my board, I have it all written down for you. If I wrote it down, should you be writing it down? Oh my god, Katie, are you kidding? It's a lot of Oh my god, I'm going to vomit. Thank you for writing it down, though. Oh, I hate you so much. I hate you so much. It's not even that bad! But thank you, I appreciate it. Everything with the stars. Everything. Everything, yes. You mean everything. Yes, guys, hello! It's not even that bad. Wait, what are the English and the Dutch growing? You said growing trading posts. The trading empires, darling. Now, the Dutch and the English are going to have the first world war in the history of the world. Does anyone know what it's called? Without this war, we wouldn't have had our end. We wouldn't have the American Revolution. Hundred years. Ago. No, that's between the French and the English. That's a good guess, then. The English Dutch. Guys, war. what war is going to facilitate the American Revolution? French and Indian. French, French and Indian. Indian. Yes, French and Indian is part of a global war called the Seven Years' War. Oh yeah. Just like 93 years. <laughs> so, how does this whole rivalry start? So, they're going to have two companies. They're called trading companies, and they're going to be the most powerful countries in the world. First one is called the Dutch, or the East India Trade Company, and its nickname is the VOC. Ladies and gentlemen, it is so important that you understand the Dutch is the VOC and the English is the EOC. You need to know those terms. It will be on your AP exam. It will be on your AP exam. It will be on your AP exam. What? So are these like the uh, first uh, major companies? In yes. History? They're the major, first major corporations. And they have so much power. They are the wealthiest and most powerful co companies in the history of the world. Huh? Portugal rises and then plummets. What? Yes, they're importing the tea. And if you've ever watched Pirates of the Caribbean, all of those gold coins are from the EOC. Yes? Okay. All right, it'll be there when you get back. Bye, guys. Have a great weekend. Wait, so it'll be, wait, it'll be okay. Stop. Sing it. <coughs> you can take a picture of it if you're really stressed about it.
Yeah. Oh, it's going to be up there. <laughs> See, I guess you're not that stressed. Um, I'm not going to film. I'm not going to film. You don't have to do great. You just have to do okay. I no, have to do Amy, thank you. Oh, gosh. I don't think I'm going to do much better. Oh, God. I got a 60. I don't even remember what the date is. 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 Bye guys, good luck. We don't luck. need to know dates, right? We just need to know two things. You need to know at least three. You need to know at least three. Stop. I wasn't memorizing three things, I was memorizing two things. No, you need to know at least three things. And don't worry, I didn't even know one. Some of them are super confusing, are only Frick my I'm just going to drop them one day in the middle of the I'm not. I'm Oh, I don't know. Remember, like, I got this stuff. In middle school, we had, like, theater. Yeah? Um, oh, I did that. And, um, 